Well, hi there, my name is Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And today I'm gonna to show you a wheel pivot card or a spinning card. There's a lot of different names I've seen for cards like this. This one, it has my own construction to it. I couldn't find any that had a construction like this as I was kind of inventing this sucker. So I wanted one where I, I could have the spinning effect going on, but I'd have my brad hidden, the hinge that they're all spinning around on is hidden. So that's on the inside of the card, all you see is the top of the brad. I'm using this stamp set from Clearly Besotted with these darling little prairie dogs. They're so cute. And I will tell you a little prairie dog story in my life in a little while. My card base is four and a quarter by four and a quarter, but the front side, the front panel is cut to four inches. The circle, the outside circle is four and a quarter inches because it has to stick out past that four inch mark. And I've got it cut out of some computer paper, some scrap, so that I can fold it in half and then in half again, and that gives me a good center point to punch a hole using a piercer in the cardstock that I'm gonna use. And I'll cut everything out of Mina 80 pound, except for that piece. So I've got my hole in my circle, and now I wanna punch the hole through the card base itself, because that's where my brad is gonna go. And it's gonna go from the uh, from the inside of the card to the outside through the uh, punch the little brad through and then make my little my little, whatever those little flanges are those little thingies flatten those suckers out next I chose a circle die that's the size that's going to be appropriate for the images that I've selected and I want it to be small enough to not show the brad in the middle and also tuck inside that wheel that round portion I'm putting it down in the lower corner because I'm going to have more paper than on the right side and the bottom side of that circle, making it a little more stable on my card. And you'll see how that plays out in just a little bit. So I want to make sure that this all works and that the top and the bottom don't spin out of the card wildly or anything. Line up that front panel and then I'm going to create my spaces to stamp in. So I'm going to draw my little circle with a pencil and then I've marked one spot on the outer circle so that I can turn that and kind of get my spaces a little bit even. I'm also putting a horizontal line so that I roughly know where vertical is when I go to stamp those images. So I've moved my tick mark down to six o'clock and then I'll make another circle. And I'm just lining that panel up each time on the right hand side. I'll move that to nine o'clock and then do another circle and do my horizontals on those because I just want to make sure my Prairie dogs aren't sticking out weird angles. And then the last one and create myself my little horizontal line. Then when I go to do my stamping, I have created a mask. This may be overkill for the kind of image you're gonna use, but for me, I wanted color in the background and everything. So I didn't wanna have the bottoms of the prairie dogs sticking out in that little area, that edge around the circle where it's gonna stick out when they're spinning it. So I made this little mask so I could stamp inside of it. I'm also gonna use the same mask when I start doing my coloring. So I'm stamping my prairie dogs, making sure that I know where that horizontal is so that they are all kind of facing the right direction when I spin them around. And some of them I'm putting two prairie dogs in. I didn't use the one with the little baby prairie dog. There's like little teeny tiny ones in the stamp set too. And I'm just gonna stamp them all in there so they are ready to color and I'm going to color them with Copic markers. You can color them with any kind of medium that you want. But so let me tell you that crazy story while I sit here and do my quick coloring. The prairie dog story was from when I lived in Montana. I rented a room in a, a big old ranch house and we had this big pasture out in the, the yard, of course. And I used to take walks out there. We had horses, we had dogs all kinds of critters and everything. Well, we had lots of these little critters, tons of them, and they were always tearing up not only the pasture out there, but they would come into the yard and they would eat all the tulips and munch on all of our flowers and everything. And we found out at one point that the university had seeded the entire pasture land in the whole area because they were doing studies on the, on the animals and they were trying to get more of them nearby so that they could follow them and, we asked the university to come and take care of them. Could they transport them somewhere else where they were wanted and not in our little space? And there wasn't really anybody at the university anymore who cared about that study. So they were long gone. 
and we ended up with just lots of holes to be stepping in as we went out there. The horses were pretty good at being able to miss the holes so they didn't seem to fall in them. I was always worried we'd have broken ankles and things, but didn't. I did learn some interesting things though about prairie dogs. One of which is that they only live on 5% of the amount of land that they used to. So we have taken over so much of their space. And the other is that they only mate for one hour a year. The, the girls are only in heat for one hour every spring. And that's how they make that many babies. So even though we think they, they mate like rabbits, they actually don't. <laughs> So I wanted to put some color around each one of these, but I didn't want the color to overlap into the other circles so that each circle, when you spun it around, would be intact, but it wouldn't spill over, if you know what I mean. And it also wouldn't go all the way out to the edge of the circle, because if it went out to the edge of the circle, then it would end up being seen. So I wanted to keep it contained. So I used the same mask. And then I could also, once I lined that up around it, I could eliminate and erase the circle pencil line that I had drawn and that worked out pretty well and I just picked a couple different greens and blues to color in around my little critters so I'd have some fancy happy color so I restored my brad and the little things I think those are called tines I think that must be it not sure where my brain was earlier but you spread your little tines out and then I'm, I'm putting my paper over just to test to make sure everything lines up the way I should did I color enough of the background color, etc., so that they'd all line up right? And I was satisfied with that. So now I was going to go and look at my front. Of the front of the card, I decided to stamp a couple of the piles of dirt and some of the grasses. And I did that because I thought it would be nice to have a scene for this little circle to pop up out of. So their little heads are kind of coming out of the grasses and the dirt the way they would if they were living out in the wild. And I'm stamping them kind of roughly along there, not really worried about it too much. Just had a quick mask, a couple masks that I cut for the dirt so the grasses wouldn't cover that. I'm going to scribble color in using the same markers that I had out already for my prairie dogs. And I did decide I had to add a little darker color because the hole that they would live in would be darker. And I didn't have one in that collection of colors already, so I picked an E49 to add some real depth and then just started scribbling in more dots of color and that sort of thing, just doodles and adding more layers of color over top of it so that that dirt just recedes to the bottom and doesn't become a focal point on the card because I still want the focal point to be the circle and the mechanism with the little prairie dog spinning around. I've added a couple layers of green then for my grasses. Originally I wanted it to just be around that right hand side I eventually added more grasses on the left because it bothered me that they just kind of stopped there. But I'm adding just a couple different greens, both in the grasses and flicks of different colors behind just to add more depth to it and more brightness. I chose I'll look out for you because I thought that was a perfect sentiment for Earth Day. Earth, we're going to look out for you and all the creatures that live here. It's time to assemble the card. I'm using some extreme power tabs for dimension. So I put two full squares on the left side, but since the right is the side that's cut short, I just cut off a little corner of each one of those so that when I stick my card front on, it's going to hold it up off the surface so the mechanism works and yet it won't get in the way of the wheel. And inside I wanted that strip of color that peeks out in the front of the card to have some color. So I just use the same shades that I used on the rest of the card and you can see that it functions just fine. I really like, like how this card came out. It's one of my favorites I've done in a while. I'm going to be doing a giveaway today. Since it is Earth Day, I want to share a little love with the Earth. So I'm going to give $100 to one of the Earth-centered, Earth-saving charities. And I would love your help in that. So please leave a comment down below here in, on YouTube or over on my blog to vote for your favorite charity to give to for Earth Day. And by the end of the day, Earth Day 2016, I will make that $100 donation to the one that gets the most comments. And I will talk to you guys later. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet. Watch another couple of videos if you'd like, and I'll see you next time. Take care and happy Earth Day. Go out and plant something green. Bye-bye.